Well, hey there. Uh, I'm going to do a little preface to these videos coming up next. Uh, just to let you know basically what kind of happened. We got hit with um, snow uh, unexpectedly. Well, somewhat expectedly, but it was definitely a lot more than we expected. And under those conditions, uh, my focus was getting through the snow and getting to a shelter. Uh, so I didn't really film too much for two days, uh, only a little bit here and there. Uh, just to, to give you an idea of what you have to deal with when you're doing that. So you kind of have to balance out uh, when you're hiking your warmth and your, your comfort factor with, you know, how much you're exerting yourself because you want to try and keep from overheating if possible which when you're doing something like this is not possible, but you want to keep your sweating down to a minimum. Uh, not only for when you're hiking, you know, you can try and stay warmer that big way, but when you stop, uh, now you're, you're, you're wet with sweat. So you've got to keep yourself warm once you stop by putting on dry layers and things like that. It's a, it's a tough balance. Uh, and, uh, you know, for two days, once I got to a shelter, uh, basically the other way I had to dry the layers I had on was to wear them and let my body heat do that process, which took hours. But in the meantime, I'm covering up with what dry layers I have, like my puffy jacket, uh, which I never hike in, but other layers. And... It's, it's a nice little balance that you have to do. So uh, when you're hiking, your focus on, on is to, to get through what you're doing and to get to the shelter. And then once you get to the shelter, uh, staying warm, getting dry, getting, getting calories in you, uh, that helps as well. So I hope that kind of explains why for a couple days I really didn't film anything. Uh, only a little bit here and there. Uh, so that was, that's what was going on with me. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy this coming up. Sorry I don't have, but, you know, maybe a couple clips from uh, a few of the days. So I ended up moving from my tent into the shelter. <clears throat> uh, supposed to be a lot of rain coming in tonight, tomorrow, all day long. Like a high in the 40s, some crap like that. So I've got space on the upper deck of the shelter. Uh, uh, honey Bun, uh, he, he walked with uh, Leslie, a.k.a. Swirl. Uh, most of the day and the two of them actually took off about an hour ago to go to another shelter it's about three miles away they figured that uh, they'd have better luck getting inside of that I don't know why I mean we we've got space here but yeah whatever I, I would have gone with them but I'm just freaking tired uh, so I've got options tomorrow Three miles, six miles, or 12 miles to a shelter. We'll see how I feel. Uh, we'll see what the weather's like. Um, if hiking in the rain isn't that bad, I'll jam out 12 miles. If not, I can pull up at six. All right, I'm going to try and get some sleep. I'm tired. Uh, on another note, I had the Trail Magic VA. Uh, chimichurri flank steak with refried beans and red rice. Dude, oh my god, it was so good. Let the swirl and, and honey bun try some, and they both agree that's like the best camping meal they have ever had. So, Trail Magic VA on Instagram, check them out. Alright folks, thanks for watching. Talk to you soon. Good morning. Day two in the Smokies. <clears throat> um, already got about three miles in. Uh, 
got up early, uh, <laughs> staying in the shelter was a treat. But regardless, um, yeah, got up, got up early, got about three miles in right now. They were predicting rain, snow, all that nasty crap today. Nothing has manifested as of yet. There's some dark clouds over there. But there's a lot of blue patches around here, too. So who knows what's going to happen. Uh, I'm going to get moving here in a little bit. I just stopped to grab breakfast and uh, get some water. Next shelter is in three miles. And then after that, the one that I'm shooting for is six more miles down the road. Uh, so that will be like a 12-mile day, if possible. I prefer not to uh, go out there and hike through snow, rain, all that crap. That's no fun. If I need to, I will, but I'd rather not. And if that means cutting it short to a six-mile day, then that's what I do. All right, let's get moving. Hey, uh, not filming much today. and certainly didn't film much yesterday because it was sucking. Um... Yeah, only got in about six miles, and I held up at a shelter with a bunch of people I'd rather have not been in a shelter with. But uh, let me show you what's going on. April 9th in the Smokies. There you go. So any recording I'm going to be doing today, I'm going to use my phone. I've got my... My pocket put up, uh, trying to conserve uh, battery life as much as possible. Uh, just a note of caution. If you've got a upper and lower deck to your shelter, sleep on the lower deck. The upper deck, like mine, had a slant, and I slowly crept towards the edge, uh, even to the point where my pillow fell off. So if you have your choice, take the lower portion. All right, time to get moving so we can stay warm. About three miles out to the uh, next shelter. <clears throat> that would give us like six for the day, but I think there's some other shelters like a few miles past those. Uh, I'm just going to stop in at the next one and, uh, you know, get some get some water, uh, eat some food. Uh, maybe brush my teeth. <laughs> I wasn't up to it this morning. <sighs> cold out. Cold out. Not a single person out here is a guy. He's got the gear for what's going on here. We'll make it. Once again, uh, another day with very little videos. Uh, today was only six miles. Uh, and I'm up here at Derek's Knob Shelter. Derek must have been an impressive guy to have a shelter named after his junk. Anyway, so... I have a feeling I'm going to combine the last <clears throat> the last two days with tomorrow uh, in the, the one big video. Uh, I'm supposed to get up to the 50s tomorrow, uh, which would be good. Make things a little bit sloppy, I'm sure, but uh, yeah, it's a lot better than getting snowed on and everything else. i telling you, today was vicious. Um, the other thing tomorrow... Clingman's, uh, Clingman's Dome, which means 200 miles. All right, well, I'm going to call it an early night, and I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Hey, everybody. Uh, day 21 of being on trail. I guess today is day 21. Uh, using my phone again, and <laughs> you can see why. It's still... Uh, Still pretty crappy out. Um, however, I'm supposed to get up to 50 degrees today. Our buddy the sun is out here making life wonderful. Uh, last couple of days are ranked pretty high on the suck meter. Uh, not above, say, 60%, though. But, uh, yeah, last couple of days were not fun. And, however, today I'm going to try out my invention of the trekking pole cam let's have some fun
Here we go. Life as a trekking pole. This is almost as good as when they put GoPros on dogs. All right, that probably got you guys a little sick. I'll stop. Trekking pole cam. What? Hey, uh, plan for today. Uh, shooting for 13 miles. I'm roughly about a day behind my schedule. Uh, no worries about food. I've got that covered. I always pack too much. Um, so, yeah, there's a shelter that was 13 miles out from where I camped last night. Uh, things to celebrate today. The sun. Oh, my God, how I miss you. I love you. Don't ever leave me. A couple other things. Today, we're going to hit Klingman's Dome. So a little significant thing about Kling's, Klingman, that, 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 Klingman's Dome is, is the highest point on the Appalachian Trail. So everything after that is downhill. The other important thing is that marks 200 miles. So I'm uh, probably about eight miles out right now, but yeah, 200 miles. Lastly, maybe not as significant, it's my birthday. So I turned 55 today. I don't feel 55. And I know a lot of 55 year olds wouldn't be out doing what I'm doing. All right, got a little climb to tackle. Chat with you some more. Well, we're on top of Siler's Bald. For whatever reason, they decided we needed to come up here. Um, it's not that bald. Looks more like a full head of hair, if you ask me. But, uh, I don't know, maybe, that, maybe that's the pinnacle there. All right, here we go. Ta-da! Top of the bald. Stopped at the shelter before here. Filled up some water. Cameled up. Uh, and uh, had a snack. Really haven't been hungry today. And I, and I know I need to eat as much as I can. But uh, five miles cling Miss Dome. Coming up to 200 miles. Oh, yeah. That's something. Let's climb to get to it. This here reminds me of being in Germany. Of course. Well, the limbs hold all that snow up there. Now the sun's hitting it. I'm getting rained on. <laughs> Good times. That's not too shabby, is it? Glad I could bring this to you. You're welcome. Klingman's Dome. There you go. 
Well, I was kind of hoping I was going to have cell reserve, or reception up there because I really wanted to get uh, Mrs. Outdoors on the phone so I could share that with her. The uh, cell reception throughout the Smokies has been spotty at best, but I figured, you know, the highest point around here that I'd be able to get something. Nah. Which is really weird because in the Rockies, when you get up to high elevation, you get like five bars. Yeah, you don't get anything here, so... Oh well, I'll uh, hopefully I can get a hold of her later. Hey, good morning, everybody. I think today's day 22. I'm officially 55 years old. Uh, sorry, I didn't do a closeout video last night, but on the way down from Klingman, Klingman's Dome. Everything just turned to shit. Um, trail was like soaking wet and slush and all that. And uh, I went down six times. And uh, first, racked up my shin. And at the same time, snapped my trekking pole. It is at no fault of the trekking pole or the manufacturer or anything like that. Uh, it's uh, any any carbon fiber trekking pole would have been destroyed on that fall. Uh, that and oh yeah, let me show you these. Here are my shoes. And so. I was hoping these were going to last me through the Smokies, but uh, they're not going to. Well, with that in mind, I didn't want to do this at all. I wanted to press right through the Smokies, but it looks like I have to go into Gatlinburg. Um, there's no way I can do this with one trekking pole and uh, the condition that these shoes are in. I mean, these things are just freaking falling apart. And I think that was some of the problem with yesterday when I was hitting the slush and all that stuff. It, I had no grip. So that's the plan. Uh, I can uh, get picked up for a ride about four miles. So I'm going to take my time, try not to fall, and uh, make those four miles. And then uh, hopefully I can call to get a ride in and do a Nero in Gatlinburg tomorrow. Yay. Well, you just got to be flexible. Well, I just got past Indian Gap. Uh, so 1.7 miles to the Newfound Gap. And I went back into the woods here and it uh, looks totally different. All right, let's get going. Okay, at the Nantahalia Outdoor Center here in uh, Tennessee, not in North Carolina. Anyway, I was able to get uh, trekking poles, new pair of shoes, picked up a can of gas, and uh, a new spoon. And the, uh, the folks here got us a room over at the Bearskin Lodge for a hiker rate, which is only about a block away. So I'm going to grab my pack and my stuff and walk on over. This place is pretty nice, though, too. Well, hey everybody, in the uh, Bearskin Lodge in Gatlinburg. Um, if you're coming out here, if you're through hiking, <coughs> the the knock, yes, the one from North Carolina, the Natahalia Outdoor Center has a store here. Uh, it's actually a better selection than what's available in North Carolina. But if you stop in the knock and let them know that you're through hiking and that you need a room, they'll call over here to the Bearskin Lodge and they'll get you one at a hiker rate, uh, which I think is like 89 bucks. Um, that's the room. It's not too bad. Uh, <laughs> and let me show you. Uh, I, I know it's probably nothing you guys care about, but, you know, little things like this can mean a lot to you. Now we're going to the bathroom. Look at the shower. And look. It's got it's got a seat. It's pretty cool. So hopefully tomorrow I'll be back to using my Osmo Pocket for uh 
videoing everything. Uh, I don't like using my phone. But, you know, I thought I'd let you guys know um, what has happened and why I'm here. So the initial plan was just to push through the Smokies, blow right through it. You know, I had the food stocked up. Um, and I was definitely ready to go on that. Uh, snow put me behind a day because I only got a couple of six-mile days in. Um, but then yesterday I crushed it, Kling, Klingman's Dome. I did 14 miles all day. Woke up this morning. It was freaking great. Uh, but what happened between hitting Klingman's Dome and my campsite is the snow, sleet, and everything like that, I wiped out six times going downhill. Um, just lost it. And the first time I go down, yep, I broke my trekking pole. And I love these too. And this is by no means a reflection on the manufacturer or the quality of their trekking poles. I think any other carbon fiber pole placed under that same situation would have snapped too. Uh, and who knows, maybe an aluminum one would have. I mean, I came down really, really hard on this pole. Um, it just scared me when I heard it snap because I thought it was my shin. Thank God it wasn't. So that's number one. Number two, pull them out of the box here, is I was hoping these were going to last until after the Smokies. Uh, but my shoes, look at that right there. And if you look at it, a lot of treads worn off on it. So, like I said, I was hoping it was going to last until Smokies, but the Hoka's are done. And maybe 300 miles tops. It's kind of a short lifespan. So over at the Knock, I picked up a pair of Topos. These are uh, Terror Ventures, I think. Uh, I've got a pair at home, and what I like about them is I've worn these already hiking in the snow, and the grip's fantastic on these. Um, the the same guy who created the Vibram Soul is the owner of this company. Uh, and the cool thing is, is they're not zero drop, but they've got that big stupid wide toe box like the Ultras have. So I'm hoping that these will serve me well. And it was funny, I was wearing those hokas with my nasty wet socks when I went in there. And I just walked up to the kid who was working there and said, give, give me size 12. And uh, he brought them out and set them down. Oh, here you go, sir. And I'm like, I'm just, I'm not going to try them on. I looked in the box to make sure they were both there. And I'm like, I'm not trying these on. Uh, yeah, my feet are nasty right now. So that's that. The other thing I did was replace my trekking poles. However, when I get back home, I will get another pair of these tack niners because uh, I like them that much but I went with a lecky aluminum trekking pole because my choices over there at the knock were either a lecky aluminum trekking pole or a black diamond aluminum trekking pole no carbon fiber which is really weird so I'll be lugging around these heavy ass pieces of uh, whatever um, probably until Maine I don't know. Maybe maybe I'll end up liking them. I don't know. A lot of people do like Leckie. Um, I really never saw what the the big the big fuss was with them, but I don't know. Maybe maybe I'll like them. Who knows? Um, but those are the uh, the two two things that caused me to pit stop. Um, body's feeling really good. I, I woke up this morning and. It was like there's no foot pain or knee pain or hip flexors or glutes or anything. Uh, none of that. Body was feeling really good uh, despite doing, you know, 14 miles. And the majority of that was climbing up to the highest point on the Appalachian Trail, which was over like 6,000 feet. Uh, so a lot of climbing yesterday, but regardless, felt really good. Um, and that was fun, man. That was a fun climb up the Klingman's Dome. You had the snow everywhere. And even though you're sloshing through water and all that, um, you end up going through like a, a conifer forest, you know, different pines and firs and all that stuff. And it was really cool, except for the snow that was dropping down on you as you're walking through. 
but it was a nice change of pace from everything else we've seen. Everything before then, from Georgia all the way up to here, has been basically um, really open forests of oak and birch uh, and beech and hickory and stuff like that. Uh, scattered pine trees, mostly the, the long needle tall pines. Um, but nothing like this today. What I saw today was very reminiscent of when I was in Germany. Um, that's definitely what it reminded me of, trudging through the forest out there in the wintertime. Uh, let's see. You, know, you saw the gear explosion in the room. Already did laundry. Uh, man, I've been jonesing for fried chicken since George and I finally got some today. Mm. Uh, so the only thing I'm going to do now is check out my my food situation. I think I might need to pick up like a couple of snacks and a lunch. But other than that, I think I'm good to go on food uh, to get me through the Smokies. Uh, we'll see. Um, I think that's about it. So talk to you in a little bit. So, hey, that just about wraps up uh, happening in Gatlinburg. Uh, getting picked up by my shuttle driver tomorrow at 8 o'clock and going back on trail. Uh, I still might be filming with my phone because it's supposed to rain tomorrow. Oh, well. Yeah, what can you do? Anyway, it'll be nice to get back on trail. Night, night, and... Uh, in a bed in, in town is good enough. And uh, looking to get started on this and finish up the Smokies. Because uh, more or less when you're done with the Smokies, you're kind of done with North Carolina. Yes. Uh, looking forward to moving on and getting into Virginia. All right, folks. Once again, thank you for watching. Talk to you soon.